Doctor, I heard you say, don't get hung up on the semantics, when referring to this condition, but, I am curious what other names this stress response system dysfunction has gone by and why so many different terms. The thing is, if you go to your conventional doctor and talk to them about adrenal fatigue, if they let you stay in the room and they don't just give you a prescription to a psychiatrist and kick you out of the room, they're going to roll their eyes at best and say adrenal fatigue isn't a thing because that's what they're taught, right? That adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. And you will even hear more integrative doctors or functional medicine doctors, some of them will even tell you that adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. Or if they agree that adrenal fatigue exists, they might call it by a different name or they'll chase after these things. What about this thing? What is causing your adrenal fatigue? All right, so let's try to, let's try to clarify a little bit of that. Conventional doctors are taught that adrenal failure is the only really the only adrenal problem you can have. And as long as you pass that test, which they may or may not give you, but as long as you don't have adrenal failure, then you don't have a problem with your adrenals. What they will admit to though, and any doctor worth their salt knows that stress physiology or stress in general, let's just call it stress. Stress causes anxiety. Stress causes depression. Stress causes insomnia. Stress can cause fatigue, it can cause weight gain, it can cause blood sugar problems, blood pressure problems. All symptoms of adrenal fatigue, by the way, they will agree that stress causes those. It's well documented in the literature. I mean, it's undeniable. So that's where they stop. You have this, right? Anxiety is a condition, here's your drug. Depression is a condition, here's your drug. So a lot of doctors will name this condition, not adrenal fatigue, but they'll talk about the symptoms of this condition without any attention to the underlying cause. If we move beyond these conventional doctors and clinicians and endocrinologists, and we look at PhDs who study stress, they will admit, and it's well documented, that you can have HPA axis dysregulation, right? Problem within the hypothalamus pituitary. You'll have, they, they document glucocorticoid re- receptor resistance syndrome and, and all these other different problems, which are really just what I call adrenal fatigue, right? Adrenal fatigue, I agree. Adrenal fatigue is not a good name for this condition, but I don't have anything else to call it. And what I tell patients is don't get hung up on the semantics and let that get in the way of you getting better right? Because doctors will chase after the symptoms. They'll chase after, they'll call it, oh, you have PTSD or complex PTSD. Well, that's a problem that's adrenal fatigue too. They'll call it adjustment disorder, right? That's actually in the ICD-10 where we pick out codes and everything. They'll call it adjustment disorder or acute stress reaction disorder. And all that stuff goes into a, a, a category of psychological diagnoses, which this condition very much is not a psychological problem, but that's what it'll land. That's basically what it'll, what it'll go to. In the olden days, they used to call this neurasthenia or weak nerves, or they've tried to call it post viral fatigue syndrome, or they've called it the uh, yuppie flu. These days they call it chronic fatigue syndrome is an adrenal problem. Fibromyalgia is a problem with the adrenals or you call they'll call it by the secondary problems and dysfunctions like irritable bowel syndrome or post epstein bar or long covid is going to be associated with this condition as well what these doctors are doing is they're looking at all the disparate names or conditions or secondary problems without focusing on really what it is in entirety is a broken stress response system from a genetic predisposition and just enough chronic stress over time to overwhelm those genetics, that system is broken. Our physiology is stuck in fight or flight. That's the problem. And that's what leads to all the symptoms we associate with adrenal fatigue. It leads to all the downline symptom uh, conditions and problems all the immune problems, all the uh, hormone problems, all the digestive problems, and more. Those are secondary problems. The main problem is that our body is stuck in fight or flight. This fulcrum is stuck. It's got us stuck here, and that's where we're at. 
you can absolutely get ahead of this, but we have to stop chasing after the symptoms. We have to stop chasing after these secondary dysfunctions, treat the underlying problem. And then you can be like my patient yesterday that I reviewed. It uh, was uh, three and a half months. She's been in one of our programs. She was literally 10% functional when she first came in and she was seeing a nature path. She's seeing functional medicine doctors they are chasing after all this viral stuff and uh, long COVID they diagnosed her. It's all adrenal fatigue. So we ignored all that, did our thing. So within three and a half months, she shares with me, she is now 75% functional. And I was, I was shocked because that's fast. That's fast. That might not sound fast for other people. They're like, for three and a half months to go from 10% to 75% is crazy impressive. And it's on the fast side. All my patients, they incrementally get better. That's a little faster than most for sure. But she was ready. She was ready. She was compliant. She did everything we asked of her and just incrementally she got on her feet in a really, in a really powerful way. Starts to turn around within, within a few weeks, we start to see this physiology shift and people start feeling better. That's significant to get to that point that quickly, but it absolutely can't happen. The thing is, you just have to address it for what it actually is. There are people that are invested in, in you not knowing what this problem is. Not on purpose, really, right? But if I'm a doctor, I specialize in irritable bowel syndrome. I take like, these bowel things, take, take this fancy glutamate uh, supplement, or I've got all these fancy herbs to heal your bowel, right? Or I've got these fancy expensive probiotics to give you. Well, you'll need, the, and they might help a little bit, right? But you'll need those forever unless you stop the damage that we absolutely know comes from stress physiology, the damage to the gut. When you stop that, all of a sudden you don't need these fancy supplements anymore. Don't get caught up in the semantics.